some buildings on the site. You won't be, you know, uh, giving too much of area for landscaping. But here, this is a boys' hostel, and this entire area, they said, okay, you do whatever you like and do some landscaping. So we planted certain uh, uh, trees. Uh, so the idea was, I told you, like, we alternated the color. Then we used the indigenous varieties like uh, Azadrapta indica, and then uh, 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 what is that, uh, Pongami and Glabra. Uh, then also uh, different um, trees that grow to different heights and different colors and all those. So whatever it is, the whole thing was uh, planted. And because um, it was done before uh, 15, uh, 20 years, before 20 years, so we had a chance to document it. So now that was uh, before so many years, just three years after planting. So this is after five and a half years. Today, if you see, it's still more dense. And uh, what happened was the whole area, uh, there's another picture I have not included, but seen from the other side, where you can't see the hostel because this entire plantation has covered that. What actually happened is um, this uh, Nagpur is a hot and dry climate. So the students, uh, this is a mess actually. From the mess, uh, they go like this and they go to the hostel. So instead of using the road, they made a road within that and a pathway and they, were, they started using that pathway because it was providing a shade. And another thing is, um, uh, it also modified the microclimate next to the building. We didn't have uh, opportunity to take any readings because that time we didn't have the uh, instruments with us. Uh, so today, if that college is interested, they can they can carry out studies and show how much of uh, cooling is obtained uh, by this uh, plantation. Then another thing is, um, how is landscaping used for reducing noise? Normally, when you're trying to reduce noise, you plant two layers of trees. No, that will make a tight shelter belt, uh, which will uh, cut off the noise. And the trees are planted alternatively, not in a straight line, but one tree, then in the second row, the tree, and in a zigzag uh, manner. So many times you get lots of noise coming from the street, so the trees can block the sound. Then again, uh, in parks also, like I told you, uh, from the house, the sound can be blocked uh, uh, to the roads and all. Someone is using a lawnmower and all. So that disturbs the people on the street. So trees can be used to cut off that noise. Then if there's a park, uh, then again, uh, different areas of the park can be uh, screened by trees and the sound can be reduced. Then major uh, uh, use of the trees is to reduce highway sound. Uh, noise coming from the highways and so there uh, you use uh, a central median planting and then on either side you use trees. So some experiments have been done where they found that uh, if you use coniferous trees then they will cut off uh, because the leaves are going right from the you know, base. So they act um, better as uh, sound absorbers than the normal trees. So uh, many, many times what happens the Along the highway, for example, uh, when we went to uh, Sharjah, there, if you are going from Sharjah to Dubai, then all along the road you have um, uh, uh, one particular type of species which they have planted all along the highway that uh, acts like a um, noise barrier and it also conceals the view of the uh, adjacent uh, neighborhoods and all that. So many times uh, trees are used to prevent uh, the noise along highways. Now see here, uh, this is in Vishakapatnam. Uh, the, you can see the Skyjurina plantations were planted earlier, uh, mainly to uh, protect the coast from the strong winds. But uh, then uh, somehow these uh, uh, things have uh, been cut off. In some cases, the fishermen they, their uh, settlements were damaged due to the cyclone. So they took refuge below the Kajurina uh, um, belts and they used the Kajurina wood for firewood. So most of the foliage was cut off. So, and even today, many of these Kajurina trees have been removed. So, but then they serve as the first defense against uh, strong winds. In the case of a cyclone, they are the best way of uh, protecting your coast. 
Now, another important thing I told you, we use trees for uh, uh, dust control. See, I'll give you a small example. Um, I was um, taking my students for a study in Nagpur, uh, landscape study, and we crossed one area. There is one uh, women's college, architecture college called LAD in a place called Seminary Hills in Nagpur. So next to that, they have a big teak plantation. So this teak plantation, uh, what we found was all the leaves are completely brown, not green, because they're covered with uh, dust from the traffic. So some of the girls started saying they're looking very bad. And all. So what I told them, see, they're looking bad, but if they were not there, then all that dust would be on your face. You know, like uh, they're acting as shields. Uh, they're uh, protecting the uh, adjacent campus from uh, all the dust. So a lot of studies have been done in parks and they showed that uh, you can reduce the sulfur dioxide concentration. Sulfur dioxide is one of the major pollutants and uh, plants are used for uh, reducing that pollution. Then another, you know, the trees reduce the greenhouse effect by shading your homes and buildings. Another important thing is, suppose you have a ground story building. And I, uh, I told you, uh, you should not put trees which are beyond the scale, but in some cases you can do that because what happens if it's a residential building with just a single floor, then if I have a tree with a white canopy which goes beyond the total height of the building, then that will cast shade on the uh, roof of that building. So that will reduce the solar radiation which is uh, transferred from the roof into the building. Then another thing is um, <coughs> they can reduce the air conditioning needs and uh, combination of CO2 removal, carbon storage in wood, and the cooling effect makes a very efficient tool in fighting the greenhouse effect. So these are, uh, you can see how it can um, reduce the wind and how winds coming from the north, uh, cold winds, they need to be blocked. And uh, here you have put um, deciduous trees so that they shed their leaves and the sunlight comes. And you have a veranda here so people can enjoy the winter sun but on the uh, winter, again, uh, the cold uh, north winds are blocked by coniferous trees. And this is how you use a venturi effect. Like, uh, if the, you know, by this type of planting, you can divert the wind, you can increase the speed. What happens if the speed increases? And what if this, this is called a trellis. There's a horizontal uh, surface and the wind will pass through this and then it will come inside the building. If this is not there, what will happen? The wind will come like this and go above the roof. You understand? So you need to divert the wind into the building. So this type of planting sometimes is used to increase the wind speed and uh, drive it into a building. See, these are all uh, some uh, wind tunnel tests which were done in Texas um, by the uh, you know Agricultural Research Institute. They've become very famous where um, a researcher called White had examined uh, uh, if you plant a shrub at certain distance, how it will dictate the wind flow inside the building. You know, like uh, he took the shrubs at varying distances and then uh, he tested them. So one interesting uh, example I can show you here is uh, like uh, these two examples. Uh, for example, if wind is coming like this and, uh, you know, for wind to enter into a room, uh, you need something known as the inlet and you need something known as the outlet. As per Vastu, it is called Saval Jawab. So if there is no Saval, no Jawab, then no question of wind entering into the room. So here what is happening is the wind is going off like this. It's coming very fast when it's going off. And there are windows on this side and this side. So what, is, what can you do to bring the wind inside the building? So here, if you plant a hedge at the corner, then the wind which is coming, some part will get diverted like this, some part will get, these, these streamlines will get diverted inside. And once they enter like this, uh, they'll look for the outlet which is here, so they'll come out like this. So what happens, uh, this room will get uh, uh, ventilation. You are bringing back the wind and make it flow in the opposite direction. Then um, you can use uh, um, landscaping for uh, retrofitting uh, for solar energy. Uh, you can increase the uh, you can use solar panels on top of, uh, uh, you know, some uh, temporary shelters like this. Maybe it can be a bus stand or um, it can be a car parking area. So you can put the solar panels. 
in india one has to be very careful uh, you can't do like this you can't put a solar panel at this site it should be at least at this site why because if you put it at this site uh, it will be there on the day you put it uh, after uh, if you go after one week you'll find somebody has removed the, the panel and taken it off so whatever is within the reach of people they'll take it off so it's better to be safe so you can't do like this in a park in india you put a solar panel like this those who are using the park will take it away okay so but then this is how they generate uh, uh, electricity through these uh, solar panels then uh, this is an example of a building with uh, trees and how those uh, position of the trees can be uh, changed or trees can be added uh according to the orientation of the site and uh, how you can uh, retrofit the building for uh, getting in solar energy and reducing the energy consumption uh, you can go through this slowly afterwards then another important thing is uh, water conservation like i told you today everyone is talking about uh, water is a very scarce resource and uh, Uh, the code, for example, if you have uh, IGBC code or LEED or any other uh, code uh, which you have to follow for uh, green buildings, then a lot of stress is done on um, saving of water resources. Uh, water is not uh, today; it is considered as a valuable resource which has to be conserved. Earlier, if you see the um, use of water, for example, um, since you must have completed French gardens, in the French gardens there are thirty-two fountains, thirty-two thousand fountains. you know uh, in the versailles and um, just imagine today if you use 32 fountains you will be arrested because you are wasting so much of water so water needs to be conserved and what are the different ways say for example you do landscaping like this for example uh, uh, water from above can come and uh, it can be reused either you can reuse the water or you can recycle the water or you can reduce the use of water and one of the principles of xeriscaping is you group together plants which have uh, similar water requirements so all plants don't have similar water requirements so if you group together some which will require less then again you will be conserving water and the type of irrigation uh, methods uh, drip irrigation if you use then you can conserve water then you use drought resistant plants so these are all uh, then another thing watering of the plants what time you watering so early morning if you water the water will remain uh, in the root zone of the pl plant for a longer time if you uh, water the plant at 12 o'clock then most of the water will evaporate then you can use some smart devices like a smart hose pipe uh, which will uh, sense the water at the root zone and once it at the uh, water is sufficient it will automatically uh, shut off okay so this is the last slide so this is uh, um this is a um, you know like a plant which i grew in my house in ramtek so plant died but uh, there is a picture of that uh, <laughs> flower in that plant so thank you very much i'll stop here sir thank you very much sir for the presentation and for um, dasara even in telangana people uh, uh, pay reverence to the same tree here we have two trees sir the one that you have shown and there is one more tree the jammi chettu so they do puja for both of both of them sir even in telangana and uh, there are so many trees that uh, as uh, we indians pray <laughs> so all yeah, those... there's one uh, tree called ficus religiosa yes, sir. so they plant that next to temples and uh, they will be moving around that and um, using lamps and well, they'll put some idol mm -hmm. at the base of the tree yes. that's why it is called ficus uh, religiosa yes, yes, religious function medicinal function so many yes. functions no uh, neem, neem plant neem plant for example i have one book uh, mm. where they have shown each and every part of the neem plant has some some value, value. Some medicinal value the leaf yeah. and then the bark and the root and mm. supposed to be a very very Uh, important plant yes in the indian context even astrologically sir all the 27 stars uh, they have a tree uh, according <laughs> to your is. date of birth yes sir. yes sir so now we we have uh, many places uh, gardens developed on this concept nakshatravanam many many places we see this uh, nakshatravanam where all the 27 trees 
related to 27 stars are uh, being used and uh, so there are methods these are the methods by which maybe we can uh, increase the number of trees if, if i say this is uh, the tree that is linked to your date of birth or astrologically it is linked then everyone pays starts paying respect to it mm -hmm. so there are so many concepts thank okay, you i'll share this presentation with sunil sir uh, you can pass it on to the students yes sir and, uh, and also sir the soft copy of the documentation you made on the plants yeah. in the Gitam campus yes. we have done a study of the plants in uh, gitam university visakhapatnam uh, you know uh, if you see the campus there are two campuses one is the engineering uh, campus another is the medical campus the medical campus is a new campus so we studied the all the plants in the campus and um, one book has come out of that uh, plants of gitam university visakhapatnam so soft copy i will share with sunil yes, yes. so you can refer that there is another uh, soft copy but that is made in macromedia flash yes, that um, you know like uh, uh, one of my uh, students um, he is a leading uh, landscape architect in hyderabad called navin so um, along with him um, i visited uh, uh, film city so he identified all those plants and then we documented all the uh, plants of the film city because see, there are a number of gardens in Film City. One is a Japanese garden, then you have Mughal garden, then you have like that different garden. Then you have groves where shooting will be done, then ground covers. Because uh, if you see in movies and all, uh, one common scene is uh, the hero and heroine will be running like anything when they're singing songs. So you want to run, you, want to run, you need a large uh, you know, expanse of land. So they cover them with turf and by the side they put all these uh, uh, ground covers and all that. So we did a documentation of that. Then we then I documented all the plants in Kits Ramtek, all the trees and shrubs and ground covers. And we also did a study of Ambazari Park in Nagpur. Now all these were actually very thick uh, files because that time we used to have only hard copies. Then uh, carrying all these hard copies everywhere was a big uh, nuisance. So, uh, I had a friend um, in Hyderabad uh, who has a firm called Java Infotech. So I met him once and then he said, uh, why you want to carry all this? We'll make it into a uh, presentation, uh, soft copy. So he took that whole thing and made it into a soft copy. Uh, so that is done in Macromedia Flash. So that uh, requests a lot of memory actually. So I'll share it with Sunil in uh, Google Drive. Um, then you can also go through it.